You built Ben Eater 6502 breadboard computer and you enjoy it because it's awesome. But every time you want to run a new program on the machine, you write the assembly, you assemble the machine code, then you rip the ROM chip off the breadboard, put it into the programmer, program it, put it back on a board, start the machine only to realize that you made a mistake in the code. But there's a solution and you have got all the hardware that you need. Curious? Stay with me. Let me introduce you to 6502. This is a small project that I built a little more than a year ago. Basically, it's a small operating system or bootloader, however you want to call it. It allows you to build your programs on your main machine, assemble the code and transfer the binary to the breadboard computer via a simple serial interface. How does it work? You write your assembly code like always. You assemble it into machine-readable bytecode using WASM. And now here it comes. 6502 provides a Node.js-based tool, which you can use to transfer your programs into the RAM of your computer. And that's the basic setup. You have your main machine, where you do all your coding. And you also have an Arduino Mega, which is part of Ben's package. You connect the Arduino to your machine via USB. And of course you also want to connect your breadboard computer. Therefore you need 10 additional jumper wires. 8 wires to transfer the data itself, one byte at a time, one common ground and one jumper wire to trigger an interrupt so the breadboard computer can read a byte and write it into the RAM. All wires need to be connected to the 65C22 except common ground and the interrupt. And that's the whole hardware setup. Easy, right? Let's have a look at 6502. It's open source and you get all relevant source code on GitHub. What are the basic requirements? As mentioned, you need the Arduino Mega, the Arduino IDE, the Mini Pro ROM programmer, as well as its software, a recent version of Node.js, Git, the WASM assembler, and of course the breadboard computer. And that's it. If you assembled the hardware correctly and burned the mini operating system onto your ROM chip, you can start the breadboard computer and explore its functionalities. Let's do that, so you can judge yourself and decide whether this is something for you. By the way, the setup you see right now uses an Arduino Nano instead of the Mega. But no worries, when we build the whole thing from scratch in a moment, we will use the Arduino Mega that came with Ben's package, so it's easy for you to follow. When you successfully start up 6502, it greets you with a handy menu which allows you to easily navigate between the different options. So let's try that. I start up the machine. I have to reset it. And here we go. So the first option, load and run, allows you to load a program which was assembled externally and directly afterwards executed. If you just want to load something into RAM, you can use load. In order to execute something which is already in the RAM, just use run. There's the monitor, that's quite helpful, uh, because it allows you to have a look at every memory cell. It is able to traverse the whole address space of this little computer, including RAM and ROM. And there's a clear RAM functionality. I personally need this because um, I'm using a non-volatile RAM chip here which means that even if I power off the computer, it doesn't lose its contents, but during debugging from time to time, it was simply necessary to clear the RAM. It might also be helpful for you. And of course, there's an about section and a credit section, and that's it. Now you have seen how it basically works. Before we build and run our first program, let's dive into the setup process and build everything from the ground up. First of all, I have to get rid of the Arduino Nano because we want to use the Arduino Mega for the build process. So we don't need power here. We also do not need the ground connection. For reasons that I get into in a minute, I would like to keep this wiring. So as you can see here right now, we have exactly eight wires going from port 10 up to port 17 over here to the right hand side. I also have some additional wiring here 
which just connects these LEDs. That's super useful because on the one hand I can still write some programs and uh, control the LEDs. On the other hand it means that whenever I transfer some data to the Bradbury computer I can see some blinking lights. So let me hook up the Arduino Mega. By the way, if you want to replicate that setup, I recommend to definitely check out the documentation on GitHub uh, because there you find the exact pin setup you need. That's the breadboard side of things. Now we connect the Arduino Mega. The brown jumper wire here is connected to port 10 on the wire chip. Port 10 on the wire chip should be connected to port 31 on the Arduino. These are the wires for the actual data transfer but we need two additional wires. The first one is common ground. So we connect the Arduino to common ground on our breadboard computer. And there's an additional wire that we need because we want to trigger an interrupt. The Mega wants to trigger an interrupt on this machine whenever it has set up some data on these data wires here. For the documentation, we need to connect port 53 to port four. So I have port 4 of the 6502 already here, over here. You might not be able to see it. You have to connect to port 4 of the 6502 directly. I can simply reuse this connection. And I have to connect to port 53. And by the way, it might be better to use the common ground over here. hardware setup seems to be fine. Now we need to install the receiver software on the Arduino Mega. Therefore, I start up the Arduino IDE. Then you have to load the receiver INO file, which you find in the project folder. We compile the sketch. Compilation was successful. Now that we have compiled the program, we want to upload it to the Arduino Mega. First, we connect it via USB to our main machine. And then we simply hit upload. And that seems to be successful. Hey! The Arduino setup is finished and complete. Let's go ahead with the software setup. The one requirement that we have is a recent version of Node.js. Version 8 should be fine. I'm currently using version 12. If you are using anything more recent, it shouldn't be a problem at all. So if you go into the project folder, you should see Sender.js. Let's try to run sender. If you see the message no input file given, that's fine. Everything seems to be working. The only thing that is missing is our little operating system. Let's get it onto the ROM. So in the project folder itself, you should see the bootloader.asm. We need to assemble it. That was quick. We have the bootloader.out. And this is the file that we now transfer onto our ROM chip. So first I disconnect the Arduino Mega and I extract the ROM chip. Put it into the programmer. Connect the programmer. And now we transfer our operating system. Let's put the ROM chip back on the breadboard. When we connect the Arduino now, nothing happens. You can reset the machine, nothing happens. And the reason for that is our machine simply doesn't have any power. We connected the common ground here, but the machine doesn't get any power from anywhere. So what I like to use is a little jumper wire from 5 volts over here to the breadboard. And as you can see, immediately our little breadboard computer starts up. Let's see, maybe we have been lucky and everything works already. Let's reset it. Hey, and we are up and running. Now everything seems to be wired and set up correctly. The only thing that is left is actually running a program on our breadboard computer. Let's do this. 6502 comes with a small demo program. 
In the examples folder you will find the Hello World. First let's assemble it. Now we have the binary file and we want to transfer this to our breadboard computer right now. But there's one missing piece. We need to tell our sender.js which port to use when sending data down to the Arduino. Let's have a look at the IDE. In my case, this is the port that I'm using. Now that everything is set up, it's demo time. On our breadboard computer, we hit reset and we select load. Now our computer is waiting for data. In the next step, we transfer our program. Okay, let's give it a try. And that actually worked. We are back in the main menu. So let's try to run our program. Hi, here we go. Our first program that we built and assembled on our main machine and transferred it to the breadboard computer and can run it easily. Let's make a change. Instead of saying hello world, let's say hello 6502. I assemble the program again. Reset our machine. Select load. And transfer our newly assembled program. Loading done. Let's run it. Hey, hello 6502. That's great, isn't it? Now you're able to assemble, build, transfer and run your programs much more easily and much quicker than before. I hope you find this helpful. But let me get back to this one point, the Arduino Nano. I will quickly disconnect the Mega and install the Nano again. And now there are just two things missing. We have a ground connection here and we have a 5 volt supply over here. Which means that as soon as I connect these two pins, we can power the whole breadboard computer just from the Arduino Nano. Let me wire this up. So that was ground. And that was 5 volts. I do not need to change anything about the wiring right now, but let's see if everything still works. And it does. As you can see, it's really convenient. Not only do you get rid of the Ardo in Omega and all the wiring, but you also have the advantage that you can now power your whole breadboard computer just via the Arduino Nano. That's pretty cool. All in all, 6502 makes your development life a whole lot easier. All you need is a minimal hardware setup and 6502 in your ROM. You can then quickly load any kind of assembled program into your ROM, run that program and debug it by examining RAM and ROM using the built-in hex monitor. Thank you for listening. I hope you find that project useful. You're welcome to clone it on GitHub, adjust it to your needs and make use of it in your own projects. If there's anything that you would like to contribute to 6502, you're more than welcome to create a pull request. I would also like to say thank you to the following contributors. Wilgert Willinger, Tim Miller, P.A. Backstrom and Ed Glaze. And that's it for 6502. If you like that video and the format, I would highly appreciate if you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. There are exciting things coming up next. In a soon to be published video series, I will build Ben Eater's 8-bit breadboard computer completely from scratch and in Logisim, a well-known and very capable logic simulation software. Afterwards, I will extend that machine with additional registers, access to 64 kilobyte of RAM instead of 16 bytes only, and an extended architecture, which altogether might lead to interesting future projects based on that simulation. Sounds exciting? Then you might also be interested in our 8-bit newsletter as well. Subscribe and never miss any exciting news, project, YouTube video or great learning resource again. At 8-bit news, we scan the web for the most interesting of resources in 8-bit space, but also beyond. We love tinkering with technology as you do. Learn how computers work, build our own ones, and share what we find on our daily internet safari. Subscribe, stand on our shoulders, and never miss an exciting project no more. It's free, well curated, and free of spam.
If you liked that video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and for the best of 8-bit news in your inbox, head over to 8bitnews.io. Thank you.